years, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas has claimed income from a real estate firm that no longer exists, New York, uh, the Washington Post reporting reveals. Over the last 20 years, Thomas has, quote, reported on required financial disclosure forms that his family received rental income up to hundreds of thousands of dollars from a firm called Ginger Limited Partnership, the Post reports. But that company, which is a Nebraska real estate firm that was instituted in the 1980s by his wife and her family, has not existed since 2006, again, according to the Post. In 2006, the family real estate company was reportedly shut down and a new firm was created, state incorporation records revealed. In the years since, Thomas has reported income from the, quote, defunct company, which has been between $50,000 and $100,000 per year in recent years, without any mention of the newer firm, Ginger Holdings LLC, the Post says. Uh, so actually, all it seems to be here, if I'm following this correctly, is a change in the name of the holdings company. Um, yeah. This I, one has much more of the ring very... of a clerical error than an <laughs> effort not to disclose. The, again, hundreds of thousands of dollars of uh, travel mm -hmm. costs that were paid uh, or paid by Harlan for Clarence Thomas for decades of their friendship, which was an ethics violation. But this one seems more like a mismanagement of reporting records. Right. Like a very basic mistake. Yeah. I, I see on, uh, on, on Twitter, Chris Hayes retweeted, jo uh, Chris Hayes, the MSNBC host, retreated, uh, retweeted Josh Marshall of Turning Point's memo saying that the issue here just seems to be that the family company reincorporated under a slightly different name and Clarence Thomas kept using the old naming disclosure. So that is sort of a nothing burger. Sure. I, I tend to agree. And even though I think that the failure to disclose the other financial gifts over a, pe a period of many, many years is significant. Um, and I got to say, if the shoe were on the liberal foot, I think we'd be hearing a lot about the corruption and the pay, pay for play of liberal justices. Um, I think, and I talked about this with uh, Clarence Thomas biographer Corey Robin on my podcast last week, that there's nothing that we learn about this kind of failure to disclose scandal that Clarence Thomas hasn't been very open about in his jurisprudence on corruption and money in politics. Right. And that, you know, he's been explicit about the fact that but for quid pro quo, me literally saying to you, Robbie, I'm going to give you this cup of coffee, you know, if you vote for me in the next election, but for explicit, like, tit for tit hat, gift giving like that, he thinks that very strongly that money is speech, very supportive, obviously, of the kind of um, jurisprudence that gave us uh, Citizens United, believes that it is democratic and that it's aspirational for citizens to want to influence political outcomes via money and shows no concern about outsized wealth like that held by billionaire Harlan Crow having an outsized effect on our legislation and whether or not that legislation is actually geared toward the interests of working class people who don't have as much financial mm -hmm. control. So that's not to say that this doesn't matter, but it's to say that maybe we are um, focused on the salacious instead of focusing on kind of substantive reforms uh, to how we handle money and politics in this country. Right. I mean, if he was supposed to uh, disclose the, um, the, the the trips, that that kind of stuff, in accordance with whatever the the law or the requirement on Supreme Court justices is, I mean, there's no real check for that because it's the check is the Supreme Court, then yeah. he should have done it. I, I tend not to, you said pay for play. Like, I, I tend not to think that, I mean, obviously, if a Supreme Court case came before the court in specifically involving that wealthy guy or like maybe it was real estate or something, mm -hmm. then, of course, Clarence Thomas should recuse himself. Um, there have probably been examples. I'm not like an expert on this kind of thing. I'm sure there have been examples over time where Supreme Court justices have, have not recused and themselves. Clarence Thomas has when, been a part in, of that. Uh, when, the, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. But, but, but just like the pay for, like this is a guy who's a conservative who wants conservative policy. Clarence Thomas supports is a conservative who wants conservative policy. That's not, I think that's not quite the same as saying like, yeah, I'm going to give you gifts and then you're going to give me some favor. Like, right, which is why Clarence Thomas doesn't see a problem with it. And, I mean, and I again, really, like, I, I, well, people, I don't either, I guess. People have been saying Clarence Thomas was going to rule in substantially the same way. He didn't need Harlan, the Harlan Crow relationship to do that. I think that's largely true. Although I do think that sometimes folks are being a little myopic about the ways in which policy can benefit someone like Harlan Crow outside of his literal real estate Mm -hmm. properties or companies being involved in direct litigation before the courts. One thing that I think that Senator Whitehouse has done a very good job of is highlighting the extent to which 
If you look at the 5-4 conservative-leaning decisions on the Supreme Court over the past you know, couple decades or so, while there's a lot of attention that's played to, paid to you know, abortion and affirmative action and some of these more culture war issues, overwhelmingly those 5-4 Republican-leaning decisions are about camp campaign finance reform, um, tax law, the kinds of uh, financial liberties that the rich too often enjoy in this country as opposed to the poor. And there is, I think, that it's been done a real disservice to working people in this country that they believe, they might believe that, you know, the conservative justices are, quote, unquote, on their side because they're, they are advocating for them with respect to various cultural issues. But the real money, the reason why the Federalist Society arguably and some of these conservative institutions and donors put so much money behind the Fed SOC to Supreme Court pipeline and funding um, this particular kind of conservative jurisprudence isn't because they want to, you know, protect Americans from woke queen, drag queens or whatever, but it's because they are very much literally rigging our legal system to disempower the working class. Um, well, writer Jay Willis tweeted the connect the connective tissue with these Clarence Thomas stories is that the guy does not think of himself as having any responsibility to the public. His job is to crank out right-wing opinions and hobnob with his mega-rich friends who like them. That's it. I mean, look, obviously, if you have a left progressive perspective that you know all these viewpoints are bad, then you're going to not like the Supreme Court you know, doing, I mean, the, the, the Democratic side has not taken the Supreme Court as seriously as the Republican side has mm -hmm. in the last, you know, however, 20 years. There has been a conservative plan to recapture the Supreme Court. You used to have, you know, in previous generations, you would have Republicans, Republican presidents. Republican presidents had picked the vast majority of the Supreme Court, uh, like when I was a kid, and but you weren't having conservative decisions because they were not filtering for actual conservative belief. They were just kind of picking willy-nilly well, people that they liked. Uh, well, it was I think 100% willing to but you did see a trend of people becoming increasingly liberal over the course of their time on the court. And I think that, I mean, that has something Earl to do with Warren, people becoming increasingly David Souter. liberal or being or having a response to certain reactionary, I think, impulses that were happening within the Republican Party at the same time. So someone like Sandra Day O'Connor is presented with a, a burgeoning, increasingly right, you know, mm -hmm. I don't like to use the phrase right, right wing too much, overuse it, but like right wing movement that creates the space between them. And is it that she's moving left or is the party moving right without her? It's worth noting in terms of the actual implications of any of the scandal. It's not clear that there were, could really be any. This is um, from Vox. Uh, they, they asked a policy analyst from Project on Government Oversight, David Janofsky, who said, one of the long-running dynamics that makes it challenging when we talk about Supreme Court ethics is that short of impeachment, there's not really disciplinary measures in place for Supreme Court justices. Uh, for justice to be impeached, both the majority of the House and two-thirds of the Senate would have to vote in favor of doing so, So, which is, of course, is not very unlikely given the happen, so makeup of Congress. Very yeah. little reason to talk about it. More rising right after this.